Yada, 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 yada. Y'all remember that? Okay, okay. And so with all of this happening on the ark, now what Noah did is, and his family did was they had enough sense now, Carolyn. They had enough sense to take the kind of food that every animal would eat so that while they were there, the food would be more than enough for every animal. I know some people probably wonder, well, how in the world, Mother Wilma, were, were we able to have plant life again if you didn't have all, if all the animals and were on the, 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 the mates were on the, the vessel or, or on the, the ark and there was nothing left. The water destroyed everything. So how did we get plant life and vegetation again? When the animals got off the ark, what they ate in the ark, they deposited back on the earth to produce, come on now, to produce vegetation. Come on, I thought y'all were with me. To produce vegetation all over again. Oh my goodness. So all they did was drop waste. And from the waste it went into the ground. Which became a seed. And you had a forest from a goat. Oh. I, th I, th I, th I, th I thought y'all knew that. Dad, I thought, I thought Hello. I know you. I knew you knew that, but I just thought I would tell you because most people don't. They don't. Try, they try to figure it out. Well, how did if if God kill everything and if all the water could kill all the plants and all the trees and for for dozens of days there was no life, no plant life, no nothing. So how did God do it? The stuff in the ark. I'm about to say something, Mika. I'm about to say something. The stuff in the ark that was deposited in them in the ark was enough to give birth outside of the ark. Ooh, that's prophetic right there. There's some stuff, Carolyn, that's going on in your ark. But it's putting something inside of you that once you come out of that ark, it's able to reproduce at its own kind and it'll be a blessing rather than the cursing. Amen. See, the, the cursing drove me into the ark, but the blessing was coming out of the ark. Oh, I told, I told, I told y'all there was something coming out of that. I, man, I could feel that bad boy right there. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, that dog is about to hunt. Okay, all right. So y'all with me so far? Come on. I said, are you with me so far? So, so Satan is the big dog. He running everything. He can talk trash. That's why he could take Jesus up on the mountain and say, hey, Jesus, do you see this city? Look, look, look at the tallest building in the city. All of this I can give to you if you bow and worship me. See, he's thinking that the same manipulation that he used with Adam, he can now use on Jesus. And so he wants to manipulate Jesus' authority for his own self-grandizement. And Jesus said, don't you know you should worship the Lord, your God, and him only should you worship. So what I'm going to look like bow down and worshiping a thief. Okay, all right, all right. So, 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 so therefore, we now have, which takes me back to the initial text, but I wanted to give it to you in a chronological order. Everybody with me? chronological order. The Bible is not written in chronological order. It comes more from a topical order rather than a chronological order. That's why sometimes you can be reading uh, the Bible and then all of a sudden it looks like, well, what happened? Something just drops out and, and you, know, you, don't, you don't know it anymore. And, and then it may pick up in, over in 2 Chronicles. But you were over in 1 Kings. And then 2 Chronicles talks about it again. And so it, it just sometimes tends to make it look like uh, the Bible is confusing. Come on. Are you, are you with me? And, that, and, and, you know, usually when we read a story, we read a book, we watch a movie, you follow it one act to another act, uh, another act, uh, one chapter to another chapter, and it has continuity to it. You know, when you read the Bible, quite often you run into it and, and it lacks what? Continuity. Because it's not written in chronological order. It's not written in a time sequence as opposed to a topical sequence. So if we were to take the Bible and, and, and do it from a chronological order, you will find that even some of the Psalms is inserted in the book of Genesis because of time, not chapters or books. 
It's not topical, it's chronological. Okay, so is everybody with me so far? So just, just so that you'll see chronologically, let's look at the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So I want to take you back to Ma Mark, or should I say Matthew 28, but before I take you to Matthew 28, let me precede that with Mark 16, so you'll see the relationship uh, based on what we have been studying so far. Mark chapter 16, let's pick up the narrative at around verse 14. Still later, he, Jesus, appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together. And he rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe those who had seen him after he had raised from the dead. Now, I promise you, if we went back to Matthew 28, we would see something very similar to this preceding verse 18. Because here the women go to tell the disciples, Jesus said, meet him at Galilee. So now, so from Mark 16, 14, the chronological order, the chronology here goes to Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came to them and said, now do you see where we are now? It's, it's important. And Jesus came to them and said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So if we had to follow it chronologically, we, we see that in Mark 16, 14, the disciples, you say, well, now pastor, but it don't say that in Matthew. You've got to remember, you've got, you've got four different writers with four different perspectives. And yet, even with the different perspectives, Keith, don't misconstrue perspective from chronology. Right. Right. I, 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 are you with me? Mm -hmm. so, so what happens is, even in their writings, Linda, some of the writers at, were writing at the same time about the same event. And it's very clear when you start to read the Synoptic Gospels, relationship between the two, but yet it's slightly different, and that's because of perception. I hope I haven't confused you. Okay, if not, get the CD or the DVD, because you always want to see me moving my hands. Okay. And Jesus came to them and said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. How does Jesus make that statement? Because in John, 1 John chapter 3, 8, I step outside of chronology now, okay? I'm stepping outside of the chronological order because I want to build, I want to build from the text, chronologically speaking. Are you still here? So in 1 John 3 and 8, he that committed sin is of the devil. Let's just get that right. We know who your daddy is. Committed, meaning he that lives a lifestyle of sin, your daddy is the devil. For the devil sent it from when? The beginning. So, so therefore, since there was a beginning, we knew what he was doing. And for this purpose, what purpose? Because people are in sin, and the devil who sinned from the beginning has now got those people locked down. For this purpose, the Son of Man, was, or Son of God, rather, was manifest that he might destroy the works. What were the works? What were the works? Remember, we looked at, and I shared them with you, when he took over the lease, what he brought with him. The curse is what he brought. And so everything came with him was under the curse that he might destroy the works or the curse of the devil this purpose what purpose to reverse the curse since we knew what the devil was doing brandy Jesus had to come and reverse that because up until that point man was living a can't help it lifestyle even on their best day, with 20 sacrifices, with 20 turtle doves, with 50 goats, with 50 lambs, even on his, with his best sacrifice, with a lamb that has never been hurt, never been bruised, never been broken, a fresh kid lamb, even on the best sacrifice, man could not stop. They could not stop what they were doing. They, they just couldn't help it. And so watch this. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So here we have the beginning 2,000 years later. 
We're back at the beginning again. In the beginning, it was Adam, Eve, the serpent. Good stuff, curse, bad stuff. Here, now we have Jesus. Still at the place of delight, but not specifically delightful. Get that one. It was a place of delight, but not delightful. Hey, okay, so, 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 so watch. This is why, look at Ephesians 4 and 8. This is why, uh, y- y- y'all don't mind going to school this morning, right? Because yeah, I, I, I want us to understand uh, the power of the believer's authority. We ain't been walking in it, and part of that is because we didn't know nothing about it. And then the stuff we do know, we don't even appropriate. So let's just kind of change this thing around. Tell your neighbor, say, this thing is turned around, it's turned around, it's turned around. Ephesians 4 and 8, um, and most often we hear this taught when they want to explain what is called the fivefold ministers or the ministry of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Let me show you something, though. It pertains to our lesson today. Ephesians 4 and 8, this is why the scripture says, when he, Jesus, ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Okay, now watch, because I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. You got to remember, whenever a king went and overthrowed a nation, and then overthrowing that nation, the king now comes under the subject of the victor. Are you with me? When he now becomes under the subject of the victor and everybody else under the subject of the victor, when he comes back from war, he brings back the spoils, the goods. Why? Because the spoils and the goods that he shares with everybody reflects his dominion, reflects his authority. Tosh, it now reflects who he is. It now gives you a clear picture of who the victor is. It doesn't matter who the victor was. When he comes back with goods, you now know who the victor is. And so he passes out gifts because these gifts are given so that everybody now knows he the man. Are you, are you with me? Who the man? He the man. He, he the man. So, 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 so watch, watch here. Paul's saying, this is why the scripture says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Well, I want you to see something because I want, I want to just real quickly touch on captivity captive. Because it sounds like an oxymoron. How can you lead captivity captive? Hey, something a little ambiguity is here. Okay, maybe, maybe I was just trying to get you to be too deep. I'm sorry. Okay, so, so let me repeat for you. Under the auspices of the devil, sin, death, hell, the grave, the curse of sickness and disease, lack and poverty, held man captive under Satan's rule. Man was held captive under Satan's rule by sin, by death, by hell, the grave, the curse of sickness and disease, and lack and poverty. He was now captive. And these were the chains that held him in captivity under Satan's rule. Are you with me? I said, are you with me? Okay, all right. So let me show you something else. Jesus now comes and destroys Satan's stronghold forever. And puts all things under his feet. And takes that thing that held man captive. What is it? Sin. Come on. Death. Hell. Come on. What else? Yeah. All all of those things. He puts them under his feet. And that which once held man captive has now become What you see? You, you, you see it, Antoine? So that which once held man captive, Jesus takes it now and puts it under his feet and says, I'm now leading captivity captive. Captivity now has come under my authority. It's all under my feet. I'm now ruling this stuff. And so no longer will man ever be held captive by sin, 
death, hell, the grave, sickness and disease, lack and poverty. Why? Because Jesus is the victor. Jesus is the victor. And when he gave gifts, you see it? Verse 8, he gave gifts to men to say that I am the captor, not the capture. Come on, I want, you to, I want you to get this. I want you to get this. You see, if you get a revelation of this, Taj, you'll never let this stuff buckle you up again. You'll never let it tie you down again because you now know, shock, good golly, Miss Marley, I cannot become captivated by this again because I've been liberated by the power of his dear son. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm, get, I'm getting a bit excited here. I'm getting a bit excited here. And now let's jump to verse 9. Same chapter, book of Ephesians. I want to repeat again. I stepped outside of the chronological order to make some points here. Notice that it says he ascended. He, when he ascended on high is how verse 8 opens up, right? So notice the, the author says, notice it says he ascended in verse 8. This clearly means that Christ had to first descend before he could you can't ascend if you've never come on come on let's keep it real simple you cannot ascend if you've never descended so what he's saying here is it it's clear that there was a descension into the lower parts of the earth before there was an ascension on high well why would he have to go to the lower parts of the earth because that's where the chains were that's where captivity was. The, that's where the head of captivity was in the lower part. So he had to go there, Keith, and he had to take back the authority, the rule, the dominion of the captivity and put it under his feet and get up, walk the city with all power in his hand. Oh, this is, this is some good stuff right here, huh? Are, are, are y'all getting this? Come on, are you sure you're getting this? And I said, what they got to do with the lesson? Stay with me. Don't backslide. Stay with me. Look at verse 15 of 2 Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. I went there last week and I told you how uh, the Apostle Paul, who quite often, since, since the New Testament is written in, in the original translation is Greek, as the Old Testament, the original translation is Hebrew. And so Paul, being of dual citizenship, he often used the Greek methods. He often used things that, that would be familiar with, with those who are uh, Greek or even Romans. And so what he does is he uses a Roman analogy here in verse 15. And having disarmed the powers and authority, remember I told you that there were two two fingers that would be removed from a king once he was overthrown his ring finger yeah and then his thumb the signet because he could put his thumb on the color and stamp it because he'd use that as a stamp stamp it with his thumb so his thumb print or he could use his signet ring put it on a color and stamp the document. So to take away the two fingers was a clear indication you no longer have any. Come on. <laughs> you getting it. And just think, you letting this fella push you around. You still letting sin push you around. You still letting lack and poverty rule your life. You're still letting sickness and disease rule your life, and it has no authority. 